So if you don't know, GitHub Pages are a really cool feature, free, from GitHub. As you can see on screen here, host it directly from your GitHub repository, just edit, push, and changes our life. It's a way, a free way, to host a website on GitHub. Now the catch is, if you're not a paid customer of GitHub, this will only work with free, or not free, sorry, but public repositories. If you want to host a website from a private repository, you're going to need a paid subscription to GitHub. Now, they walk you through getting this set up, and it's really easy. It's a really nice feature. If you just look here as you go down, they get you to choose between the kind of project or, or, or website you want to host. Is it a user organization site or a project site? We're going to choose project site. They have themes. We're going to say start from scratch. Now they get you to create a file in your repository, an index.html file, right at the root in source control. You commit the file. You go to your repository settings uh, under GitHub pages and you select the master branch as the source and you're done. And, and that's, it really is that simple. And, and you'll get a, uh, your, your GitHub username dot github.io forward slash the name of your repository. That will be the public URL for your new website. Really, really simple. And it's great and, and very fast for hosting simple static websites. Now, the thing is, could this work if you want to host a, an app, a web app that's built on top of a web framework like Angular or something like Vue or, you know, any, any kind of, kind of front end web, uh, framework. So yes, this can be done, but you'll still have, if you're using that workflow, you'll still have to have the build artifact. So if we're, we're using Angular, for instance, you know, you do ng build and this will produce, you know, the build website in a dist folder. If you want GitHub pages to serve that, you're going to have to check that in to source control, which is less than ideal, right? And that has been the way before. If we wanted to host uh, an Angular app, let's say, on, on GitHub pages. That's the way most people would do it, either directly from a, a branch or a folder, often called docs by default, I think. So that worked, but it wasn't super clean, right? You still ended up having your build artifact as part of your source control uh, yeah, as, as part of the, your, your, your code in source control. Now that's, up, that's up until recently. I'm going to show you a new way of doing it that allows for using GitHub Actions to build your, your app. We're going to use Angular. So we're going to build our Angular app and we're going to upload the build artifact to GitHub, to GitHub's servers. And that will then be served on our GitHub page without having to have that build artifact be part of the checked in code as part of source control. All right, so let's get started. I've already created a repository, both locally and in, in GitHub. I've called it GitHub Pages Workflow, GH Pages Workflow. That is going to be available for you. I'll put the, the link, the link's right there, but I'll put it in the description as well if you want to take a look at the workflow file that we'll be creating together. You'll see it's, it's relatively simple. Uh, and just to give you uh, an idea of what we're trying to do here, I'm just going to go to my local here. Let's just serve our Angular app locally. So you can see what we're dealing with. It's, uh, I haven't done anything to it. It's just the starter app when you build a new, you create a new app with Angular, right? So this is what we're trying to host on our GitHub page. Right now, this is localhost. What we want to do is make it so that we can see this on, it'll probably end up being nimblepros.github.io forward slash gh pages workflow or something like that, right? So that's, that's what we're setting out to do. So 
to do that. Let's, okay, I'm just going to, yeah, let's go here. No, here to our repository. And the first thing we're going to do is go to our settings here. Go down to code and automation pages. Now the default is deploy from a branch. That's a scenario I talked about at the beginning of the video, but that's not what we want now. We want to use GitHub Actions, which right now is in beta, but it works really, really well. So let's select that. This will give us a few ch choices, starter choices for a potential workflow, which if it, if it fits your case, if you're dealing with a Jekyll or just a static uh, website, you can use one of those. We're going to choose create your own right here. Create your own. All right. And this will uh, set up a, I guess it uses a template and it's already got a lot of what we need, we're, but we're going to need to change a little bit, change it a little bit. So we're going to name it, let's just name it, I guess, Angular Build. Uh, boy. But, yeah. Yeah. Let's go with that. All right, so looking at this, you can see that this will get triggered when we're, we're pushing changes to the master branch, which is usually what we would want. But if you have a different workflow, you can change that here. Workflow dispatch allows us to basically, oh, so that's what the, the comment here says. You can manually trigger it if you want. You don't have to force a push to get that to, to, to trigger. And this is the interesting part here. This is what we're going to be changing a little bit and uh, customizing for our needs. So it already has the checkout. That's usually where this starts. So what we're going to do is add node and install the dependencies and then build our Angular app. So this will be the first change we're going to make i'm just going to paste that in and we can delete we can delete this these two lines here they're just placeholders for the actual build script that you would have to put there this is basically what what we're doing here now i've got scope here but this <clears throat> this little flag here is important if you're doing it in angular because this will get served from not from the root of the domain, but from the repository name as a folder, basically. So you have to add that so that the bundles get served properly after index HTML gets served, right? So workflow. Yep. PH pages workflow. There we go. So what does this do? Well, we're bringing in Node.js version 20, which is the LTS at the moment. We're running npm install to get all the dependencies and Angular and all the libraries and all that stuff installed. And then we're running our build script, our Angular build script, right? And by default, you can configure that in the repo if you want in, in, in code, but by default, Angular apps will deploy or, or will build to a dist folder, D-I-S-T, right? So that's important for the next step. But this here is enough to get us going and get the build working properly. And just to, uh, to we're not done, but I'm going to show you that this should work at least in, in as uh, much as the build step is, is considered. So create Angular, sure, build step, All right? Let's do that. Commit directly to master branch. Obviously you could be doing this locally in Visual Studio Code. I'm doing it right there because it works pretty well. Okay, so now we've saved our new YAML file in the workflows folder. And if we go to actions, this should have created or triggered, I should say, our build step. There we go. So it already checked out the source code using Node.js, it's running npm install, that completed 
it's now working on building Angular, that worked, and we're done, right? So our build step is working, that's great, but we're not quite done. So let's go here, the workflow file again. Now we're going to need to add the deploy step. So let's go back in here and let's add, I'm going to copy that over. Actually, before we do that, we have to upload the artifact before we deploy it. So we're going to add this step here. Okay. Upload artifact, which uses uh, an already pre-made workflow. And this is the important part here with path. And this is the GH pages workflow. Now, this is for me. That's, that's where Angular is going to build this. You would have to change that to work for your particular project. And if you're trying this with something else than Angular, it might be completely different. But the idea here is that this needs to be the path where whatever build step we just went through here, this needs to be the path to where that build artifact is going to be. And this will upload it to uh, GitHub. And by default, it uses the uh, name GitHub pages for identifying that upload artifact, which will come in handy right now. Let's see. And copy the next step. And we're going to create that as a different job, I guess. Right? So now the deployment job. Uh, and here's, here's where this is. So the name is we're looking for GitHub pages and a needs build, right? So this needs to come after the build job. Permissions. This is really important. You need to throw that in there. Otherwise, this won't work. So pages and ID token need to have the right permission and the actual step. Well, we're, we're just using an action that's already pre, uh, pre built the deploy pages action. All right. So uh, this is the whole thing. This is all you need. Not very complicated. Let's commit our change. We call that add deploy job. We're committing directly to master. All right. Which should trigger the action. Let's go. Take a look. It's going to go through our build job first. We're now completing the build job. It's moving on to the deploy job. Deploying to GitHub completed, which means if we look at completed, we'll even have the link here. Let's see if this worked for us. There we go. We've got an Angular app served as a GitHub page and no build artifact in our source control, right? We don't have that typical dist folder that would show up here if we build uh, our app, uh, our Angular app, right? It's not part of source control. Now, I want to show you that now we've created that action and it's triggered when we're pushing changes to to master this all works seamlessly so let's just take a look this here is the actual github page this is the locally served page we're just going to make a small change and push that so that you see that this all nice works nicely and seamlessly so let's just go into our app component here and let's just change, let's just change hello for hi. Hot module reloading in Angular is great for local development. Perfect. Let's commit that. Oh, let's see what Copilot comes up. Updated greeting message. Perfect. 
Let's, let's go with that. This is pretty cool. All right, we're pushing our change to GitHub. And if we come back to our repository, we should see that this would trigger, there we go, a new, this would trigger our workflow. It's gonna go through the build process. And we're done, this, com this completed in 56 seconds. And now, this is the GitHub page. If I refresh, hi, there you go. Simple as that, uh, and you can host. This is typically used for documentation websites and things like that, but it's also a, a pretty nice way to quickly host something and set up the whole workflow with CI, CD for very early projects that you might be working on and just want to, to set up something real, right? Where other people might also be able to take a look and, and, and kind of test and, so this is a nice solution for that. So I hope you thought this was helpful. If you did, please click the like button, subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos about software development.